Welcome back to another episode of Propel's Talk. It's Chris, Lito, and myself, Five. Uh, Pelicans lose and to the Indiana Pacers, 129-122. We'll get into it. Presented by Company Burger and DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, that's the code right there, boot. Use that. Bet $5. Try to win 200 You know how we run it up. Um, damn, bro. Damn, bro. Uh, Pellets fall to the Indiana Pacers at, at Indiana. Chris, what's your initial reaction? <laughs> Should Man, like my first uh, my first reaction is that this morning, um, I I tweeted New Orleans is winning tonight. Hmm. You know, thinking that I would have enough room between between the Saints and between the what's the Saints game is still going on to be fair. Uh, oh, they lose. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I to <laughs> give myself some room, I co tweeted that with the LeBron with the LeBron picture. You know what I mean? So I just you know just. You just knew you was lying. Hey man, just you just knew you was lying. You caught it, so you caught it with LeBron pictures. Just now, just now, just to, oh. you know, just to kind of you know what I mean. But no, nah, man, I mean, look, um, look, I mean, five and five start. I, I, I always believe that Bill Parcells quote: "You are what your record says you are," and that's the Pelicans right now. They're a they're a mediocre team trying to find themselves. Um, got one side of the ball figured out in certain spurts. No, uh, I mean, actually, both sides are inconsistent. And, um. It's gonna it's gonna take some time, and I, I mean, look, this depth that we've been talking about for so long, it's well, being tested, right? It's being mm-hmm. tested. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speaking of being tested, um, saw a bunch of different lineups. That depth looking looking like a shallow pool. Lito, is there yep. any changes? Well, we know that some changes got to be made. What's the first one that pops in the mind for you? Bless. You. Thank you. God bless the troop. I ain't even said it yet. That's real. <laughs> man, play Dyson Daniels, man. Play Dyson Daniels. Um, zero minutes tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, DMP. DMP uh, <clears throat> Devontae Graham played 20 minutes. Jose didn't have a great game. And then he, he had 14 minutes. I feel like, you know, we talk about the depth to this team. We were. You know, everybody said we were the deepest team in the league or one of the deepest teams. Like, where is that integrally going to come from? Where where can you find that continuity in the rotation now, especially if Larry Nance is out? Like, who is going to be there to pick up the pieces for us to continue, you know, the 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 march throughout the season? I feel like, you know, you asked Chris a, Chris a question. I feel like perception is reality, right? If you, it depends on your expectations of the team or how you would feel about the team being five and five, right? Like, if you thought you know they were still a young team growing and trying to figure it out, then five and five is cool. Five and five is cool. That's a that's a that's a cool record. You know what I'm saying? If you if you were one of the people said conference finals or anything beyond that, like you know, I I don't know. I, I still feel like. There is a lot of season left. Um, hopefully the, the depth can show up and hopefully the rotations can be figured out. I like to like to bring up this point. You know, we, we had a, a lot of people play and and we we think we as a conglomerate here, we think that you know playing Dyson probably over Devontae Graham would be beneficial for this team. It just seems tough because does our coaching staff not believe that? Do they not see the the inconsistencies of this team? And we are what our record says. At, at some point in this game, there was a chance to make a run. And this team consistently, the one thing we consistently do is turn the ball over at, at the wrong time or not make a shot at the at the right time. How do we fix these things? Chris, how, how do we, you know, come to terms with fixing this? You got to you got to put yourself in in better situations. I mean, I, you know, I think they one of the consistents, especially since Brandon has got back into the lineup, has been slow starts. You know, I mean, and again, it's only been what three games, but um, that's what we have to roll with right now. 
three slow starts in a row of you having to, you know, uh, come back for some kind of deficit, you know, and you use all of your energy just to get back in the game consistently. And as soon as you do it, you know, you push back. And some of that is what they're doing defensively. And some of that is um, still figuring out each other offensively. That's a part. But I think, you know, in the process, you know, if you're the coaching staff, if you're Willie Green, you got to put these guys in the best situation. And, and, you know, we can all have an opinion about who should be out there and who's not. And we'll have to see what's up with Larry Nance. I think he hyperextended his knee um, in the fourth quarter, I believe. And maybe that calls on Jackson Hayes to play minutes at the five, which at this point, um, you know, might be beneficial. I mean, I don't I don't know. I, but like Lito said, this team is struggling with guard, guard penetration. Um, guards are pretty much whether <laughs> guards are – um, through screening roles or through isolations or finding or, or finding ways to um, get where they want to on the floor against certain matchups, throwing the ball in the corner and rotating it around. If they don't get a, if they don't get an open three in the corner, Dyson is one of those guys. He's built for those type of setups. He's and and it's not like he's a negative offensively. Um, he's shown you in pretty much each game something, whether it been his jumper, he got to the free throw line, you know, the floater, finishing at the cup you know, the rebounding, I think you need that. And it's not a desperate play. Like, he's ready to play NBA basketball. He's answered the bell every time you put him in. And, you know, teams are just – not only are they picking on you, they're picking on the center you have on the floor. If it's not Larry Nance in screening rows, and if it is Larry Nance, you you lose a rebounding. You know, but they're picking on your guards. They're picking on C.J. in moments. You can't expect C.J. to, can, you know, to be a, a good defender every night. They're picking on Devontae Graham. They're picking on Jose Alvarado just being small. You know what I mean? As as feisty of a defender as he is, Dyson is one of those guys. He like, look, bro, he's your second best defender. He just is. That's right now, today. I don't even know if that's an insult. I, I believe he's just that good. Um, you got these guys out here. I think dudes like him, you got to use them because you're gonna score the ball. Lito, we've we've been pretty consistent in this that you know this team needs to get better intellectually right uh knowing what's going to happen before it happens you know a a team sends a high ball screen what are the other two options that can happen out of it we know possibly a layup or a corner three on the opposite end like that just that's just how it goes how does this team you know do you think they're watching film or is they like are they are they talking about these things pre-game like what What's the answer? I mean, I, I, I don't <clears throat> I don't believe that they're I mean I, I don't wanna I don't wanna shortchange them in, in their professionalism by saying they don't. I'm just saying, but I would say if they are, it's not coming through in a play. Okay. Um it has to I, I refuse to believe you play a team like the Pacers and there's not a game plan to to you know protect the three point line to for the high screening role for these things you you know the tendencies of Miles Turner you know what Miles Turner wants to do so now is there a disconnect between the play and the coach that's a valid question you know what i'm saying like that's a valid question because what the implementation of the game plan it doesn't it do, it doesn't or it didn't look like it worked today right um <clears throat> Do I think guys are individually watching film on their own, though? I, I don't believe so. I, I, I don't. I, my question isn't necessarily. I'm sure they're watching film as a collective, as, yeah. as a team. They're professionals, yeah. But I'm saying, like, what? What's the thing that's you know separating from what they see to actually what happens on the court? Because it's just it's not correlating correctly at this point. So look, I think I think there are many answers to that question. But but I think the one thing as a as a collective that we need to do better is when we see something isn't working, make an in-game adjustment to it. Okay. There, there are things plan for things. You plan for rain all the time, right? Well, a fucking monsoon or snow. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 it's a it's a heat wave, right? What do you do? You change your clothes, you change the attire, you grab an umbrella. It, it just depends on what the scenario causes for, right? So in this case, like if you if you see Miles Turner is is beating Miles Turner is picking popping, he's never rolling unless there's a smaller person on him, right? You make an adjustment to that. And and I, I think going forward, that's the thing that is gonna 
that's what good teams do. That's what good coaches do. That's what, you know, well-run organizations do. They make adjustments in game. All the time you don't have time to hit the chalkboard, watch film, review. Yo, like we're seeing it in real time. Let's fix it right now. I I, I have a I have a question for y'all though. I don't mean to jump around. But so I was looking at I was looking at the game tonight. Um CJ has seven assists. I don't believe CJ had a, a, a overall good game. I mean, I'm sure he would tell you that as well. Three for 11 from the field. But the thing that jumped out me was Zion also has seven assists. So going forward, and we were talking about this a little bit on the live stream, but going forward, do you think that maybe the ball should be in, you know, maybe Zion should initiate the offense even more than he has been? Uh, I'll step in. Uh, yeah. No, it, it can't be. Again, we talked about it on the last stream. It can't be CJ uh, initiating. It just doesn't. It just doesn't get you in the right spots at times. With him having the the ball in his hands, he wants to. He's going to force some kind of kind of action, right? He at all times he's he's probably ultra confident, right, in himself and his skills. At all times, he feels like he has the advantage. Hell, he got on ESPN on that that Friday before the the Clippers game. No, after the Clippers game, saying, "Yeah, I liked a lot of those matchups." He probably feels like that all the time. But in this system, we need to be playing through Zion or Brandon first, first before CJ even gets that opportunity. And I know that's probably not something that he's used to, but at the especially at the beginning of the game, man, because you can shoot your, you can shoot the team out of a game. Have him playing slow. He's not the quickest guy. He's not trying to push pace, you know. So I think if you allow Zion to be that point forward and, and allow Brandon to initiate offense first, I think it helps CJ. Also, definitely helps Zion and Brandon. I mean, look, man. I mean, they, you know, winning teams, you know, they they let their stars dictate, you know, the pace. They let their stars dictate the result. Their star stars and. You know, um, I, I think, you know, you, you can argue where CJ fits, but it's clear in the high in the hierarchy, it's Brandon and, you know, it's Zion. You, you can debate from there who's one and who's two. Um, I personally, while I trust Brandon with the basketball in his hands, just as a preference more than Zion, I don't think that there's anything more dangerous that the Pelicans can draw up more it, it's more dangerous than Zion with the ball at the top of the key. Zion initiating the offense. And the fun part about it now, if I can put my positive uh, Pels Twitter hat on, right, or Durag on, um, is that he's getting better. Like, you're, you're watching him. When people say it, he hasn't played basketball in, this, in so many amount of games or whatever, give him time, game to game, He's literally getting better. You're watching him feel and look more comfortable every game. He made two threes in the first quarter after not making – I don't think he's made multiple nope. threes in a game since game one of his career, bro. Yeah, This was his first two made threes of the season, uh, numbers three and four. Uh, he's only taking a couple. So he's taking two – making two in a quarter – yeah, I, I mean, and then, you know, you from there, you're seeing him with the pivot, the pivot fade, um, you know, uh, in that, you know, right in the pain area. Like he's getting everything that he wants now. And with the without the free throws, it doesn't even matter at that point because he's making it happen, taking care like he's only going to get better. So um, I definitely think if you are going to if there's a hierarchy and where this team goes and where this offense goes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's those two. And CJ, listen, man, when CJ got to New Orleans, and he talked about it even when he was in Portland, I'm going to fit in. I'm going to find a way to fit in. I always have. I played so many different roles. I found it. Well, it's one of those situations where he has to take a back seat because if those two don't figure it out, tonight 29 and 26 was perfect, and it, you know they both were fairly efficient, this team is going to go where those two drag them. It'll be nice when CJ's going to have to carry the load and pick up the load. But those two have to, Brandon and Zion, you know, this team is going to live or die by what they do with the basketball in their hands most nights. I mean, CJ was able to carry the team when Brandon and Zion was out. Like, you know, it's it's kind of hard when you were able to get any shot and then you got to tone that down. 
you know, take a step back to to give it to those, you know, superstars in the making, in a sense. Um, he has been good in times. I, I just I just think his best self is facilitating first. And and then when Brandon and Zion are on, on a break, like, yo, go get yours. Go get yours at all costs. Because at that point, you're in a rhythm because you've got other people involved. And now it's, you know, you can, it's your world. They just in it. Can I, can well, I follow? Rotation wise, though, like, you know how, and I, I'm going I'm to let you go right there, Lito. If you know that, if you know that, what I would do, I would run, like Zion, there's, there's been, um, and Willie's starting to, he's starting to play with the rotations a little bit, how he uses Brandon, Zion, and CJ. But let CJ be the first one to, to, uh, to leave out of the three in the first quarter. Let him handle the second unit and get those shots and get those opportunities, stabilize, whatever, and let your two guys determine how this first quarter and the start that you get off to is going to happen. Um, that, that's personally what I would do. Uh, well, shit. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of where I was going. Additionally, I was just, I was, I was just going to add to that and say, I mean, we, we, based on what five, you know, said previously in, in, in piggybacking off what you said, right? Like, do you think we should make a concerted effort to maybe, I don't know, start Trey, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, stagger the minutes even more? Start Trey yeah. as opposed to, and, and take who out? I'm saying to bring CJ in so he can he can legitimately like run that six that six man uh type role and get get his points whenever he wants to. So you have Zion running the Oh, play. you mean like wait, you mean to start the game or you mean when you when you when you pull CJ out like the first they say 6 minutes in. Let's go for chaos. Uh I mean to start the game. Oh. <laughs> now Five, go ahead. I It's interesting. I'd say no, but it is interesting. Actually, if you if you to make that suggestion, I'm all for CJ. You know, being being a six man, uh, I I think that's I think that may be where he where he ends up. But I actually like I actually like Jose. I know that sounds off the wall, but it makes more sense because he's a great ball handler. Like he don't turn the ball over like like talking about. And he's not looking for his when he's like in the when he's playing with Brandon. Like he knows if he gets it to Brandon, if he's open, Brandon's gonna get it back to him. So it's not it's not like CJ where if he get his shit up, he's probably not gonna get it back. He's that's probably how he thinks. So if he's just primarily with the second unit and can finish games, I think that's probably where CJ's best fitted. Now look at the look at the Lakers, you know, as you look at the Lakers. Look how things changed when Russ accepted being a six man. Like there were still times where he played on the court with Braun and AD, but he was a whole different person because his rhythm had already been gained by playing with, you know, playing against, you know, lesser talent, you know, understanding who he's with and he can, he can run the show. I think CJ can be very effective in the same, using the same sense. Chris, before you answer that question, I just want to say like, that's what five just said. That's kind of how I was seeing it because I'm like, you know, you we're saying, you know, in transition, you got Zion, you got Brandon, and at some point he has to give it up in order for those guys to get a rhythm, right? So if we can just let him be his full self, like I think, you know, you talk about the depth of the team, that may extend the depth a little bit more, right? My problem is I just can't foresee a way that it ever happens. So yeah, it's, just mean, hard, it it's hard for me to even dream, right? Because I just don't – I just don't see a way with CJ's coming off the bench. And, and 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 I'll say this, uh, barring barring he gets I, I don't want him to get hurt, but barring he has a layoff, he has, he has a layoff where he gets hurt for a few weeks and the team plays really well and he walks himself back like you know I mean Kawhi we don't know how long Kawhi was gonna be coming off the bench for the Clippers I don't remember if he ever ended up starting but maybe something like that but that that's I really can't see it happening and then I'll say this like. That's one side of it, but like the Atlanta game, for example, CJ was mad. Like CJ got off to what? He got off what? Eleven points in the first quarter. Like Atlanta was a bad matchup for Bi. Second game back, and it was a tough matchup for Zion in the beginning, between John having to having to move navigate past John Collins, Bi's navigate through DeAndre Hunter, the help defense they have there, and then Clint Capella protecting the rim. 
CJ was the one that had the matchup and was able to get going. So um, I just think together, man, like that trio has to has to read has to read the room starting out. Yeah. And I don't know who that falls on, coaching staff, game planning, that but but whatever setup that was that, that was put together after that. The first few games of BI when when CJ arrived last time and they went out to dinner and had wine and they talked about everything between those two and Willie, they need to do the same thing and add Zion and they need to figure that out and how they are gonna just structure it, just organize it. Yeah. I think the most feasible way is probably CJ still start and him being the first one out at, at six. And even him, he's smart enough to know because he's probably one of those people. Who, Hey, I can get free throws if we're in the bonus with the second year. Like he thinks of things like that in a sense where he knows when he needs to be playing. Um, but back to what you were saying, Chris, they they do need to have a conversation. There needs to be some kind of structure. But also, this this game let me know something. Let me know something. We continue to do the same thing over and over, as if like it's like Novocaine. Eventually, it's gonna it's gonna work. Like we were. We were going under on TJ McConnell as we should, but yet we were accepting screens and switching. Like, no, we 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 have to know who we're playing against. I think that's the biggest pet peeve of mine. Like, you know what the other team wants to do. You've seen it enough. You've you should understand that, but yet we continue to do the opposite. That thinking, you know, we're gonna trick them out of this. Like, no, you. How, why do we continue to do the same things every time? To, to, you know, go against a team like that. And you have the perfect individual on the sitting, sitting on your bench that is made for that kind of style that you want to run defensively. You want to run that scheme, play Dyson Daniels. You can't have, bro, I don't, how many winning teams can you think of in the league right now that has three, six, three and under guards playing 20 plus minutes a game. I don't know what Jose what Jose is playing. I don't think it's that is that high, but I'm just I'm just asking, right? It's just it's just it's not uh, your ass like Devonte has to come in and shoot so well and make a few plays off the ball so on and so forth for it to, for you to even break even some nights. You got pick one, bro. Go with Jose and eventually run Dyson. This is going to happen. It's going to happen eventually. I, I I that like I feel like we're smart enough to know that that's going to happen, but it's frustrating right now is when you look at the guard play and the, the way the teams are beating you night in and night out with hunt, hunt, hunting for switches, screening rows, um, um, the uh, the ways that point guards are trapped, you know, are getting to where they want on the floor. And you're almost choosing not to do anything about it for, you know, whatever reason. After every time Dyson gets into the game, something positive happens. He hasn't had he, – he has not had, outside of those free throws – Everything's been positive in the regular season. Yeah. Man, listen, the, the Pelicans sit five and five on the season. Again, presented by Company Burger, 4600 Fred Street. Uh, we're gonna close out here. Lito, you first. The Pelicans sit five and five. This is the first set of games for them. They like to break the games up in tens. Cool. So the first set of tens. Um, how do how do you see the team moving forward in the next set of tens? What do you see us getting better at in the next set of tens? Just one thing. Just one thing. Just pick one thing to say we're going to get better at this. <laughs> I want to make it as simple as possible. Um, Can you go to Chris first? Chris, yeah. Chris, go ahead. Man. What are they going to get better in the next, in the next 10? Um, I think the way they open games is going to, is going to get better. Okay. I think that they, they are going to find a way going for in the next 10 to not repeat these slow starts and these low energetic, and they're going to be the ones setting the pace and pushing the pace. That's what's so frustrating, bro. When you have those talents, you should be setting the pace consistently, but they're kind of, you know, they're being, they're, they're the ones being hunted. I think the next 10, they'll find a way to make adjustments to be the team um, that is, you know, setting things off and getting off the fast starts and making the opposite team having to fight back and play from a deficit um, throughout the game. I I think that situationally, 
<clears throat> will be better. Um, I, I think that going forward, I, I believe in Willie, right? I believe in Willie. I, I want to get that understood. Um, and I also was not calling for CJ to go to the bench. I'm, I'm just asking questions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know how people are. But I, um, I know what you meant. It's going to be in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. And yes, I do want Kevin Durant. If <laughs> you are <laughs> if you here, bro, I do for sure. Um situationally, Fob, I think that Willie is gonna Willie is gonna be better. He's gonna take a look at, I think he's gonna have a come to Jesus moment. Um, he's gonna look in the mirror and he's gonna say, Man, you know what? I got a Ferrari sitting on the bench. Like I really just need to play him. He understands defensive principles, and and, and it, it it hurts because that's the thing that we need early in the game. You know what I'm saying? When you look at <clears throat> the slow starts, like little things, getting points in transition would help us um, get to get off to a quicker start. Now, so if I got to give you one thing, I'm gonna just say that situational basketball, situational basketball, looking at What's in front of us? Knowing your, knowing our personnel, putting the right people in the game. Can I ask five a question? Yeah, go ahead. Five. They struggled in the first ten closing games. How do you think that can improve? That. So, the only only you could say those those games with the Lakers. I mean, if you if you catch the three, I mean, if you if you make a free throw, you don't even, you're not even in that situation. Um, even with trade defensively, if you switch that, you're probably not in that situation. Um, you look at Brandon shot in Atlanta. You know, he had a good look. He just faded. I, I think if he goes straight up, he probably makes that. He's not a short. Um, that, those are just. Those are just basketball shit. Ain't nothing you really can do about that. I think they can close. I think Brandon can close games. I think the team's smart enough to make free throws. I think Dyson just had a rookie moment. Just got put in and it's a fire. You you in LA. You know, it's your first time really getting some run. You gotta you make a good defensive rebound. And all you gotta do is make one. You're not that great of a shooter at this point in time. The emotions probably take over. Cool. But I do think they get better. I think they got themselves good looks. They just got to make shots, um, closing games. I just want us to get smarter. Like, I keep saying it. I just want us to get smarter. At some point, like, we cannot continue to make the same mistakes. But just basketball plays. And I know it's quick second things, but you've seen it enough. You've done it. You've played it. Y'all played in playoff games at this point now, you know, we have to we have to be able to beat teams we're supposed to beat, yep. and we've lost at least three of those already this season. Yep. So, before we get out of here, can I ask y'all a question? Um, we don't know the status of Larry, so I guess moving forward throughout the next you know two games or two three games or so, do you look towards Willie or maybe? Again, Dyson having a moment, or like, what? What do you think? It, what do you? What do you think is the is the process now? Like playing Willie Hernan Gomez. Yeah. To be honest, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad at it at this point. Like we, you seen Jackson, you, you know what he's he's giving you. You know, if that's not to your liking, try somebody else. Because Larry's not if if Larry's hurt, he's not going to be there. So. Willie's coming off a MVP season in a Euro basket. Hopefully that confidence transfer is over. Uh, at one point he was like a walking double double just coming off the bench last year. I, I'll I'll take my chances. I mean he's an energy guy. He probably gives the team a lift. Um, you know, just there's there's so many options. There are a lot of options, but Willie Green just has to make them. Um, I'm, I can't believe I'm, but, well, I think Jackson has to be, has to be the guy. Um, and you're, you're in a situation where if you do improve this team at some point, um, he's a guy that might be involved in a move at some point if you're not going to bring him back going forward, which 
if the decision, of course, was made today, it would not happen. And everything that, that we've heard is was it was unlikely to begin with. But I mean, I've always had my issues with Jackson at the four because you drafted him to be a center. And what's interesting is that where this team is getting hunted at right now is at a spot where his athletic gifts can shine and help. And if he's forced to play center, if you are able to get one of those classic Jackson runs of I've been benched for a few games, or I haven't played in a week, I've been playing bad basketball, now someone has gotten hurt and it's my time to affect the team and I do really well, that'd be great for the team. And maybe it unlocks something that you never, you know, either in him or something um, out of the team that you desperately needed. Um, but I think that athleticism is, you know, can really help this team more than Willie. Because while I while I do agree with five, I mean, I you know, we know what he can give you rebound and we know he can put the ball in a bucket. We know he's going to give you everything he has effort wise and the energy is going to be there. A very likable dude. Um, Jackson gives you energy in another way. You know, he energizes buildings um, for, you know, for better, or for worse. Um can stress the floor, maybe. Um, I, I that that's 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 the the way I would go for a bunch of reasons, business and personnel. Right now, you put Willie out there; they're eventually they're going to be hunting him and picking rolls eventually too. I feel like you get a better chance with Jackson. I don't know how how much, but that'll be my pick. That's all I got. No more. No further questions. <laughs> No further questions. All right, man. That's been an episode of Propel's Talk. That's Chris. I'm five. That's Lito. Um, y'all be cool, man. Propel's play uh, on Wednesday at the, with the Bulls. Shot Town. To pull up. Is it? It's in Shot Town or in New Orleans? It's in Shot Town. I'm oh. gonna pull up. You know the GD's in the building. You know the GD in the building. Let them in the door. <laughs> in the back though. All right, man. Y'all be cool. Peace. Uh, oh, it's not.